Aloha, this is Kai Pacha with the weekly Pele Report. And this Pele Report is for June 30th, no, July 30th of 2013. I forgot how to do these things because I took a week off last week. Things have been pretty hectic around here. This could be like a little longer report because it's going to be about two weeks instead of one. There's a lot going on right now. There's a lot going on with the Kaipacha Healing Festival. I have just met 20 of the most beautiful healer, artists, amazing people, and spent a weekend healing. And it's quite an experience. This is very perfect for the time. The grand water trine of Jupiter, Lilith, and Cancer with Saturn up there in Scorpio and Neptune over there in Pisces is a time of getting in touch with our emotions and our feelings and that is how healing happens and occurs. So I'm now at the Trinity River, speaking of Grand Trines, cruising down Highway 299 <laughs> on uh, right along the Trinity River for many miles. It's a beautiful river. I'm going to end up in Mount Shasta tonight coming into Ashland, Oregon for another healing festival this weekend. It's awesome. Absolutely very powerful. And the timing for this is also aligned with, let's go back a little bit. Okay, we have to go back a little bit because Venus has been marching through Virgo and it was last Friday that Venus was opposite Neptune. Now this week it's coming along and Venus will be opposite Chiron, the wounded healer. Venus in Virgo, Neptune in Chiron in Pisces. This is one opposition that's happening. And the other opposition that's happening and has been and is, you know, building now here, Mars is coming through Cancer, opposing Pluto in Capricorn. Wow. Yeah. The, the Mars was opposite Pluto last Saturday. And tomorrow, on Wednesday, it's going to square Uranus. So we're going to have this T-square going on. Mars, Pluto, Uranus. Okay, at the same time that we have this grand trine going on. And some of you might say, what does this all mean? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but let's talk about it and see if we can discover a few things together. Um, First of all, Venus is the lower octave of Neptune. These two are in opposition with each other. Neptune is unearthly, spiritual love, ultimate union with all that is. No boundaries, no walls. Absolute. It can be platonic. It's not necessarily sexual, physical. Neptune, you know, has so much to do with this spiritual union with all that is in opposition to this Venus in Virgo. And Venus will be in Virgo for a few more weeks now. But Venus is this lower, you know, on the personal love. So we have ultimate spiritual love and personal love connecting. And, and it's, it's a time when we can kind of all oppositions have to do with seeing the other, seeing the projection, having the other be out there so that we see it in the mirror. So this can be a time of idealizing other people, idealizing our relationships. Absolutely, oh, I've met the perfect person. I'm in a perfect situation. Oh, I have these high dreams and, and these high ideals. And let's dance and play music and escape this ordinary mundane reality. It's really high love. Spiritual love combined with this Venus and Virgo. The perfect love. Wow. And then, <laughs> Mars in Cancer, opposite Pluto. Mars is the lower octave of Pluto. Pluto is the soul. Mars is our ego desires that come out, emerge out of the soul. Yeah, my teacher Jeffrey Green says, yeah, it's, we know we have a soul, 
because we have desire. And this Mars moving through Cancer is bringing up very powerful emotions, needs, feelings. And along with those needs and feelings for connection, for holding, for nurturing, come fears from the past. Cancer is ruled by the moon. Moon has to do with the past. So this stirs up passion, kundalini, the snake energy, the desire to connect, to be held, is strong. And we have to see that Pluto is in opposition yeah, to that Mars. And I just want to, you know, this just brings up for me old paradigm and new paradigm. In, in the old astrology books, you're going to look at this and go, whoa. First of all, Venus opposite Neptune, that's drugs, escapism, and it can't happen, and it's not real, and oh my God, look out and be careful. Get paranoid. Then we'll come into Mars opposite Pluto, and the books will say, it's anger and ego, and you're going to get pissed off, and watch out for your emotions, and cool down, and lay low, and stay back, especially square Uranus. These are the big bad guys of the Zodiac <laughs> next to Saturn. But we want to see this in context. We're changing paradigms. As of 1221-12, we're in a new paradigm. We're shifting these paradigms. The old hierarchy patriarchal paradigm was about controlling nature, about dominating nature, about resisting change. I talked about this in a previous Pele report. And so Mars and Pluto bring change. Pluto is Shiva. Death, destruction, removal. In order for a rebirth. In order for the new. So it has to do with letting go. And Mars in Cancer in, in, you know, in water has to do with letting go of past emotions, childhood conditioning childish patterns of behavior and changing. So these two guys are working together and they're good for us. They are us. They reflect us. They reflect our own soul intention for evolution and change. And that is going to come along with what? Cancer Capricorn access is family. And I just did family constellations work. <laughs> with Felice Laurel. She's part of the Healing Festival. Amazing work. BertHellinger.com I forget Felice's uh, website, but she's awesome. And Family Constellations works with inclusion. Anytime we exclude someone from the family, that behavior pattern that energy will show up in another generation, in another person, in the family. We can look at this planetarily or community. Whenever we exclude a dynamic within our community, within our planet, whenever we say, no, that's not us, that's not me, that's not my shadow or my energy, we are denying our Neptune-Venus I am one with all that is. I am you and you are me and we are one. And we're coming into this conscious awareness of unity now. And this new paradigm then is not about measuring our strength, measuring our power by how much we can not change, resist, stay the same, hold on to this relationship, this house, this partner, this chunk of nature, this land. It's how we can unite with nature and change with nature. I think of that thing, power versus force. And a, and a good friend, a, a Mongolian shaman, Jade Wahu Grigori, defined power. You know, power is not how much water you can get through the hose. You know, it's like, shh, say it's kundalini. The more kundalini I can shoot up my spine, yeah, the more powerful I am. 
That's force. Power, he says, is the ability to turn the spigot on and off at the appropriate time, when it's necessary, when it's right, we release. And the power is being able to hold, to, you know, to, to maintain. And then I also think of will. We could take it a step further. We've got, you know, we've got, you know, energy, power, will. Mars is will. Mars directs. So the power is our power, our ability to turn that, you know, turn our energy, transmute our energy, change our energy, and the will directs that energy. When I'm angry or upset, am I going to direct it at you or you or you? Or am I going to release and go in? Mars in Cancer is going in, going down, going back. And it has to do with cutting cords with the past. And in this case, it's going to be cutting cords with past memories past blocks, past fears, past relationships, by what? Including those people, including the people who hurt us, including the people who abandoned us, including the people who betrayed us or lied to us, including the people that hurt us, the perpetrators. It's time now to see it in a new way, in a new light, to get out of victim-perpetrator consciousness by including the victims and the perpetrators into the family, into the community, into our hearts. And the way that we can do that is by letting go of the past. And this is the Mars in Cancer. So we can Try to maintain, try to be the same, try to not cry, to not grieve those losses of the past and break free with this Mars square Uranus now, this weekend. And of course the moon is now in Taurus, it goes into Gemini Friday, then it moves through Cancer and we've got a new moon. That new moon is in Leo, and I'm coming to that new moon in Leo. It's on Monday at 14 degrees of Leo. Oh, yeah, I wanted to say something else, too. Look out if you got stuff at 12. 12 degrees. We've got Uranus at 12. The moon's nodes at 12. The sun is going to be at 12. The moon is going to be at 12, Cancer. And Chiron is at 12. I got a lot of stuff going on around 12 degrees of the zodiac. And this and then the moon comes around to Leo to that new moon. If that moon's going to sweep through Cancer Saturday and Sunday, you know, and Sunday and Monday, and we're going to have this new moon in Leo. After we have cleansed, washed, purified, cried, grieved, I'm at this healing festival. It's amazing. It's a festival of tears. <laughs> a lot of this healing, a lot of this processing is getting in touch with these deeper feelings. And this is what Mars is doing for us now. It's not easy to feel negative feelings, to feel our hurt, to feel our pain. We want to numb out. We want to have a drink, we want to have a smoke, we want to have some sex, we want to go to a movie. I don't want to feel these uncomfortable feelings. And those uncomfortable feelings go under. And they create disease and dysfunction and fear and paranoia and further separation. They create wedges in our relationships. So a lot of this healing you know, this Mars is like the sword going in and cutting, cutting into those memories and those fears and those feelings from the past. And all the wounds that we've had has a lot to do with letting go and forgiving. 
those who we say hurt us, those, uh, you know, those who did it to us. And that requires a greater, deeper, wider, broader concept of life, of destiny. Destiny brings us together, our unconscious souls bring us together. And this is the Grand Trine in water with Neptune in Pisces. There is an unconscious collective spirit washing, cleansing, healing through each and every one of us right now here today. So let's get out of the past, get out of the memories, and see that it was divinely ordained. That relationship was divinely ordained. And you know what? We're all doing the best that we can. We're caught. We're caught in our family constellations. We're caught in our past unconscious behavior patterns. And we're all doing our best consciously, but we got these unconscious programs running the show so much of the time. So we gotta forgive each other. We gotta, we gotta have mercy on each other. We have to love each other knowing that we are all limited by our past. We are all limited by our mother, by our father, by our country, by our planet consciousness. And we're all growing and evolving and learning and doing the best we can. That's the beautiful part of cancer. We've got Lilith in Cancer holding that grand trine for a while now. Jupiter's gonna move on a little faster. And so the moon's gonna come through there this weekend and by Monday and Tuesday, we've got this new moon in Leo. It's time to come out of that release. Release now. And next week you will be lighter. You will be brighter. You won't be lugging around all this stuff. You won't be limited by your own fears, millstones around your neck. So, the mantra for this week is <laughs> when I'm longing for connection and my heart is still afraid because I still remember being abandoned and betrayed, I release the memories and those people to be here now with you today. When my heart is longing for connection, no. <laughs> when I'm longing for connection, but my heart is still afraid. Because I remember being abandoned and betrayed, I release those memories and those people to be here now with you today. Then we're going to have that new moon next week and by next week, Tuesday, Wednesday. Then you can play. Then you can be the lion cub. Yeah, that just rolls around and no cares, no worries, no concerns in the world. You're all here now today because you have been washed, cleansed, purified. And the Venus opposite Chiron has healed and you feel awesome. <laughs> yeah. I wish you the best in your healing and feel those feelings to create that healing. Namaste. Aloha. So much love.